Um, please rise and join us in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to our Board of Selectmen meeting. The agenda for this evening is public service announcements, the vote uh, for hiring a new senior center director, Heather Weston, a water dock permit application, discussion on restrictions for forest harvesting permit, town administrators update, old business, new business, correspondence, <coughs> approval of minutes, citizens forum, and adjournment. Public service announcements. Mr. Moran? Okay. <laughs> I don't have any at this time. No. Okay. And I don't have any. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to turn it to Leon for the vote for oh, I'm sorry. Senior Center. I don't think we've ever had a meeting that I can recall where we had no public service announcements. <laughs> there aren't any yet. Um, uh, to the selectmen, I just wanted to um, uh, share with you that. Uh, I have in your agenda package given you a memo relative to the senior center direct, uh, director's appointment. Uh, as you know, I advertised for the position uh, this past, uh, past few months. I did so through the MMA, the Telegram, uh, the Mass Council on Aging newsletter internally as well through postings on the town's website and the town's clerk's office. I received 20 good respondents from around the region and around the state, and we provided five of them with interviews where candidates were questioned on their knowledge of dealing with seniors, providing programs, and administration of a senior center. And tonight I brought, I'm bringing forward uh, the name of Heather Weston to, the, uh, to fill the vacancy uh, senior center director for the town of Sturbridge. She's a, uh, she's a resident of the town of Warren, and she's currently the senior center director in the town of Wales. She's certainly familiar with the town of Sturbridge as a graduate of Tantasqua, and she has 10 years of experience working in senior centers with four years of experience as a director. Among her accomplishments was her work coordinating the Wales Community Food Bank, which she received an award for her work from the United Way. She also excelled in her meetings with me and certainly presented herself well to myself and my co-interviewer, who is Sue Grandone, the chair of the Council on Aging, who joins us here today. She certainly brings a great deal of passion and love for the senior population. Her references included State Senator Ann Gobi and the president of Munson Savings Bank, as well as seniors from the community who think the world of her. Uh, in conclusion, Ms. Weston has de de demonstrated her fitness for the position through her merit as evidenced by her professional and educational background. And I uh, would like to introduce uh, Heather Weston as a candidate to serve as the next senior center director for the town of Sturbridge. And she is present today to meet the board and to answer any questions that you folks may Come have. Come on board. <clears throat> Come on board. <clears throat> Good evening. Hello. <laughs> the, the, any member of the board have questions for Miss Wilson? Miss Weston, I'm sorry. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss. Miss Weston. Oh. <coughs> Welcome. I just Hello. have. So what makes you want to come to Sturbridge instead of stay in Wales? Actually, I've already been asked this question quite a few times. I know. It seems like a straightforward no, question. It's, so. it's not actually that straightforward because I really had no intention of ever leaving the town of Wales. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be the job I retired from. Unfortunately, I was, it was, I was supposed to be able to have um, a higher income. Um, there was, there was, I started that job with very low income and no benefits. And no benefits? No benefits. Oh. And it was supposed to be available to me. And things happened and changed, and I found out that, that it wasn't going to be available to me. So um, I had to make that decision that I need to take care of me, and I'd only leave where I am if it right. was for another senior center. So when the Sturbridge Senior Center needed a director, I thought that that was my opportunity right there. <laughs> That's understandable. Well, we do have good benefits, that's for sure. Um, is 
sounds nice. like any benefits yeah. is better than no any benefits. Yeah, well, we yeah. also have very good ones, but you're right. Any ones are, yeah. Anyone else on the board with questions for Mrs. Ms. Weston? Yeah, I, um, looking over your resume, I see you have, uh, have uh, uh, attended STIC and Springfield Technical Community College, and uh, it's very, uh, very interesting that in addition to having office management uh, uh, education uh, in business management, you also have nursing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was reading that to, uh, to my mother, and she said, oh, that's a good thing to have for a senior center. And uh, so uh, I think of some ba background because I, you know, some of the seniors that, that go to the senior center, uh, you know, they, they they have some uh, some issues with uh, with their health, mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, you know the, the job you wouldn't expect a senior center director to necessarily have some background in that area. And I think it's a very good uh, additional thing for the town to have well, have you have some uh, a little bit of background in nursing. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Anything? Expound on that a little bit. I think it's more than a little bit of background in nursing. Mm -hmm. From 1992 to 2006, an emergency room trauma nurse. Mm -hmm. Yep. I see that's what we need in the senior center. <laughs> <laughs> I think I we would. need that in the select rooms. I, 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 I know I'm one. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy could <laughs> appreciate Actually, my that. nursing has come in very handy on several occasions when I've had a senior at the senior center who was having a major problem, and my knowledge of medical um, was enough that I got them the help that they needed quickly. Mm -hmm. and wouldn't listen to them arguing with me because I knew they needed help. <laughs> you may want to put a little more equipment on your wish list than the defibrillator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they have one. They, they already have one they there. They have but one at the uh, senior yeah. center. There may be some other things that might Anything, be needed. Anyone else? Any more questions for Ms. Weston? I think it's very excellent, you know, excellent candidate. Is there a motion on the table? So moved. What? Second? What's Is there a second? Just for clarification. Why don't we, why don't <laughs> you, make, you want to make the motion as uh, our you want me to make the it? Salary. TA recommended because it has a salary in there. And yeah. yeah. Right on that sheet, uh, Craig. The first one? The yeah. one from uh, yeah, Leon. As well. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not trying. Want to pass this to you? Okay. okay. Yeah. Where I checked off right there. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's also on the cover letter too. I move to appoint Heather Weston to the position of Senior Center Director effective March 21st, 2018 at a rate of pay of 50461 per year. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Vote carries four to zero. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll be in touch. Okay. Um, and I also would like um, to thank uh, Sue for her uh, involvement. You, she spent many hours with me reviewing resumes and reviewing, uh, uh, in helping in the interviews, and I really appreciate her investment in time. And I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Oh, yeah. Reading that, I officially want to say thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you Best of luck. Thank you, Sue. Have a nice day. Thank Say you. hi to Bill. <laughs> yeah. We have a water dock permit application, 44 Burgess School Road, Cedar Lake. That's you, folks. Right, come on. For the record, please identify yourselves. I'm David Travinsky. Lise Travinsky. I live at 44 Burgess School Road in Sturbridge. Thank you. <coughs> Perhaps you can uh, give an explanation to the board. They have in, your, in their agenda package a copy of uh, a letter from you dated August 23rd. They also have a copy of your application for a license and permit, which is for the water dock on Cedar Lake. Uh, Madam Chair, in your agenda, uh, there's also a diagram of yeah. the property in question. Some various photos, they may or may not be a little bit difficult to see. We did try to replicate them in the copier the best we could um, mm -hmm. uh, for you folks. Um, we also have a correspondence from 
the uh, conservation agent um, who has reviewed the application and um, and is uh, is uh, submitted to the board of selectmen's attention. So I'll turn it over to you, and you can explain to the board what it is that you're looking to do. Well, uh, first of all. Um my wife's family has been at this location for God only knows, probably uh, 60 or 70 years. And uh, one thing that we always, uh, we just always had a doc there. And I've been, you know, since I started dating my wife and while well, we got married and everything, going back to the early 70s, there was always a doc there on our property. And uh, as I spoke with Mr. Gomo, I got a copy of the, uh, the bylaws concerning mm -hmm. uh, moorings, floats, rafts, and ramps. And maybe at some point her family did get a permit for it. We don't know. But I was under the impression by reading this, and as I talked to Mr. Gomo, that if you had a dock that wasn't moored into the ground, Permit wasn't necessary, and that's how I. It's kind of vague how you read this. It's a little bit vague, but anyway, uh, for a number of years, uh, when her mother was alive, we've had a, you know, a situation where there's been a, a dock on the adjoining property and a boat in front of our property, and. Her mother never wanted to make an issue of it. She said, oh, let's kind of keep the peace and everything. But we have a very narrow piece of land, 77 feet of frontage. And last year I just said, you know, we take pride in this place. And I asked the neighbor, could you move the boat? And they refused. And we asked them two more times. And they refused to move the boat. So I came in and talked to Mr. Gomo, and uh, I brought in some pictures, and I don't know this, if you see by those pictures, our house is the shorter one on the right, and the neighbors are on the other side, and you can see where their dock is in relation to that fence, and the boat's on the other side. And I hate wasting the board's time with something like this, but I just said, I'm going to get a permit, make sure I've got one. I didn't, after talking to Mr. Gomo, I, he said, no, you need a permit. So I said, okay, fine, we'll get a permit. And uh, I don't care if they just move the boat. But apparently, according to the bylaws, there's nothing in there that says they don't have to move a boat. They can have a dock that's just in, on their property and not in front of another property, but there's nothing that says a craft, you know, so. Has to be on their own property. Right, yeah. so I think it's pretty clear that in my mind, and I know if anybody else had property there, they'd want their neighbors to put their boat on their own side. Will, will the dock help that situation for you? Yeah. It will, okay because I'm gonna put my dock so their boat's gonna be, my boat's gonna be where their boat is. I, I gotcha. figure if okay. I've gotta look at a boat, I'm gonna look at my boat. Gotcha. My okay. dock, is, as you can see from that picture, mm -hmm. used to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that's <coughs> probably still be there, but I'm gonna move it just to. Okay. Is Questions from the board? From, from the pictures that I'm seeing, it, uh, well, it doesn't look like the dock on the neighboring property is a uh, um, is a temporary dock, removable dock. It's a it's anchored they, to the it, Yeah, they both are. All of the docks in that picture are out of the water right now. Oh, so that that dock it looked like there's vertical supports on on the dock. Well, there it's just a wooden structure. Mm -hmm. oh. And they look it out as but kinds it's, of newer it's not ones. Your, your proposed dock, how, how is, is that going to be floating or is it? Uh, no, it's just got legs. It's got three sections. 
It's aluminum frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just bolt the three sections together and the dock pieces just fall into place on top. It, Madam Chair, yes. through you, um, I want to uh, share with, because it relates to Mr. Supernaut's question, I want to relate to Mr. Travinsky uh, and the board um, the, the, the correspondence that we received from the conservation agent. Um, according to the conservation agent, the application states that it's a 120 square foot dock. The proposed docks appears to have been designed to not exceed this town of Sturbridge 200 square foot surface space requirement, mm -hmm. but that the filing did not include a detail of the dock design. Therefore, other d design details are unknown. Uh, and what they're recommending is that the applicant um, um, also uh, contact the conservation department to discuss the proposed dock details, such as how it's going to be anchored, what is the proposed for footing, decking, etc. And then they can determine if they will need to have any filings with the uh, uh, pursuant to the Wetlands Protection Act or the Sturbridge Wetlands Bylaws. Uh, but they don't necessarily have any problems. She didn't have any problems necessarily with the application as it was presented. So Conservation Commission does have questions about how the dock is to be constructed, um, you know, anchored to the, the, the ground and that's it, It's in the definition of anchored, it's not anchored. It's not like a piling or anything uh, else. Understood. It just sits flat. It's got pads and it just sits. It just sits on the ground. Is this like an aluminum dock with yeah, the, exactly. with the you know, the aluminum dock that you buy and you can buy sections and it's That's got wheels what, on it? What it, it is. Mine is that what it is? Ours does good. not have wheels. Okay. It's just got sections. three sections. So it's an aluminum dock. They're held together okay. by bolts. You unbolt it. That's the same thing we put in at 47 Karen Road. So that, yeah. Same thing, only no wheels. It's got legs. Okay, so I think their concern is that I don't use uh, pressure treated lumber yep. right. to right. drive into the ground or yep. creosote treated, nothing. Like it. It's all aluminum. Uh, These are the questions that she'll want to have yeah. answered from you. So thank all you, Madam Chair. Is this, um, have we done this before where they've gone to Conscom after they've asked for a dock permit? I don't. We, I, really always, I always ask the conservation for a review of the plans. Mm -hmm. Right, but usually when they tell us it's aluminum, we don't send them to Conscom. Right, right, because it's a temporary dock, it's not a permanent dock. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not. I put aluminum on there. I, yeah. I know you did, yeah. but I'm just saying, I'm not, I don't recall in other dock permits. No, a temporary dock can be moved Not anyway. for a temporary dock that's removable that we have sent anybody to Conscom, so I'm not sure why we're doing it now. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm asking the town administrator. That's I'm asking the town administrator. I, uh, we, s we send all dock permits to the Conservation Commission. I don't think they're asking to hold this up. The board can okay. act on this. They were just mm -hmm. asking mm -hmm. that that information be provided to them. So we can approve this today. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. You're the board of That's selection. all I was yeah. concerned because <laughs> okay. this was new. I think that I, if I'm not if not my mistaking reading this correctly, there's a twofold problem here. He's looking for a permit for a dock, and he's also looking for the resolution on this here that both being parked in front of his property. Is that correct? That's what it sounds yeah. like. Is that hopefully, yes. hopefully, yeah. uh, if the board grants this permit on mm -hmm. the dock, I'll put my dock in and my boat in, mm -hmm. and there won't be room for another boat. And that will take care of this problem because you'll go right up to the property line. I hope so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, We've really tried to reason. And it's the just one thing, if, if I could ask the board, uh, w would it be appropriate to ask the chairman of the Conservation Commission if he's run into this problem before since he's is in the audience and how we would handle this type of situation? We could. Yeah. Um, they don't usually handle that. But yeah. I, I don't want to set a precedent no. for this either. Yeah. They I mean, um, I think if we can approve it, and they know what they have to give to conservation, then I think we'll be all right. I just hate to set a precedent. Mm -hmm. Well, this a, dock <laughs> falls within our within our, our bylaws, bylaws, correct? Yes. Yeah, so and it's a, rem that's te it's a temporary removable dock. That's right. what not a permanent one. Time, yeah. So I don't see a problem approving it. But, you know, maybe because I'm, usually I like to think the glass is half full, but I guess tonight I'm thinking might be half empty. <laughs> I don't necessarily know if this is gonna make your problem, I hope it does make your problem go away. Right. What they're envisioning is they're gonna put their dock there in their boat, and that boat's gonna have to move because of their dock and their boat. Right. And I'm just envisioning maybe him not, maybe that family not moving their boat. So, I mean, 
I think gonna go in, no. I understand. On another night, I, I would like to look at that bylaw because it seems to me a very unreasonable, stringent reading of it to, you know, have the dock in one place but then allow the boat and I know nobody owns the water, but to be on the property side of the adjacent property owner, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You would think as a matter of courtesy, people wouldn't do it, but no. if somehow we can have that in our bylaw, I think that would be a lot stronger. I don't think we've ever had that happen since. Right. I know, but I mean, it's also a reading of the bylaw that right. is a little bit unreasonable. Right. Yeah. Uh, we don't want the dock there, but then the boat can be there. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If I can add, uh, I was the guilty part. We were the guilty party one year when we put a, uh, a personal watercraft on the other side with the other neighbor and it was over by I don't know how much it just a couple of feet or whatever uh, uh, mm -hmm. and they came out and asked us could you please move and this entitled this mm -hmm. uh, required us to move the dock mm -hmm. you know and we did we moved right. it as a it's a courtesy. Yeah, it's a courtesy, and a neighbor wanted okay. it. I, I, yeah, I think, though, you have a good point, and perhaps on a future agenda item, it's something we could look at, definitely look at. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm with you. I don't see any issue with this dock. No. Neither um, do it I. It does meet the bylaw. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a motion to the, for any of this? I'd like to make the motion that we approve the dock, dock permit for, uh, what's this, 46 Burgess School 44. Road? 44. 44. 44. For Mr. Dravinsky, as proposed. Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Welcome. It's nice to be thinking about the summer and the spring, right? Putting your boat back in. Spring, it's winter. Spring Not tomorrow, but a <laughs> couple weeks. It's a short season. Yeah. As soon as the ice is gone, we like to put the boat in the water. Good for you. That's Might have to good. wait a week or two now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, forest, least forest harvesting, harvesting permit, T. Jepson and Sons. Mm -hmm. One up. It's a carryover from last time. It is. I will remind the select. You, You're very welcome. welcome. Um, I will remind the selectmen that the public hearing is closed. Um, and I will let the Board of Selectmen know that some things have transpired since the last time mm -hmm. we folks met. Um, uh, the Conservation Commission was able to walk the property and they've prepared a response in your agenda package for this project. Um, uh, and the memo reads as follows. That's um, since the last Board of Selectmen meeting, Steve Halterman, Sturridge Conservation Commissioner, and the conservation agent had the opportunity to perform a site visit on the property. John Clark, by the way, Mr. Clark, is joined us again for the meeting, uh, who is the plan preparer, walked the site with us and discussed the proposed forest cutting plan. The site visit and the discussion clarified our potential concerns and any outstanding questions. Mr. Clark showed us the location of the proposed landing, the locations of the stream crossings and the wetland crossing at this time. Only stand one is proposed to be harvested. No harvested is pr harvesting is proposed within the wetlands. The property contains old farm roads. The proposed skid trails and crossings will make use of these remnant roads minimizing impacts to the resource areas and site. Water bars will be utilized on skid trails to divert any runoff from the resource areas. Um, the locations of the stream crossing and the wetland crossing were chosen to minimize impacts to the resource area. The wetland proposed to be crossed is very shallow and rocky and based on our observations it appears that this wetland may be dry or mostly dry during the time of work. Therefore, it does not appear to have the capacity to support breeding habitats for amphibians. Preventative me measures will be taken to minimize impacts to this wetland. The stream crossings will be poled and bridged, minimizing or avoiding direct impacts to the stream. Having the ability to utilize both proposed stream crossings will minimize disturbance to steep areas on the property, reducing erosion concerns in the area. They appreciate having the opportunity to see the site. Site visits are an important component to any project review and always prove to be beneficial to the outcome of our decision-making process. And what it says here is that the Conservation Commission recommends that the forest cutting plan be approved. I know that that's not what you folks are doing. You're, the, the plan is already approved by the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. You folks are going to determine whether or not any reasonable restrictions or conditions should be placed on the project in your agenda package. 
uh, selectmen, I have included a list of the uh, standard provisions that we typically would offer for your consideration. Discussion on this? I have no questions. I have uh, the hall route has been declared. The $5,000 permit has been offered. And our, our uh, Conservation Commission has had full access to the property and a very cooperative discussion, I guess, with the uh, harvester. So I have no problems with this permit at all. Okay. Mr. Supernot? I, I think the, uh, the applicant has done everything that the uh, Board of Selectmen requested. And I would uh, be in favor of uh, moving forward with this. I agree and I just want to say thank you for allowing our mm -hmm. conservation agent onto the property. I'm sure you were a facilitator with the owner. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Somebody? Um, I'll move that, uh, that the, uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, approve this uh, permit uh, uh, with the issues, the standard issues uh, for logging permits in Sturbridge. Should I read all of them? And okay. standard, you're looking for standard restrictions? Uh, the, the following conditions in logging permits. Uh, uh, you need to read them? Logging operations yes, shall be allowed Monday through Friday with no harvesting on recognized Massachusetts legal holidays from 7 a.m. to dusk and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon. Saturdays. Saturdays. Yes. Saturdays from 8 a.m. Did I say Sundays? Yes. I, okay. Or on Sunday or holiday hours. No Sunday or no, holiday no hours. No Sunday. No Sunday or holiday hours. Prior to commencement of logging operations, the applicant shall coordinate transportation with the town's school bus schedule and avoid conflict between logging operations and school bus operations. Third, work shall be performed when the ground is dry, frozen, or otherwise stable. Fourth, a $5,000 road bond shall be submitted to the town administrator before work commences to ensure that repairs are made to any town roads damaged as a result of, uh, of the subject forestry harvest uh, project and the town may additionally require a performance bond to uh, ensure uh, erosion control measures before, during, and for the reasonable period of time after the proposed operations. Said bond shall be released by the town treasurer upon inspection and a satisfactory finding by the DPW director. Next, a licensed timber harvester is identified prior to commencement of the work. Finally, the DPW and the conservation agent must be notified before starting work. So moved. Well, it's a se that's your second, right? Okay. Your motion is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. Lee, and you're going to give them those conditions, right? Yeah. You'll get a letter from me in writing with the, with the, all of those details. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good Thank you. Okay. Next is the town administrator's update. Thank you. Um, the first item I would ask the board's concurrence with the appointment of Jeff Artis to the Sturbridge Tourist Association. Is there a motion? So moved. No. Second. A second. Discussion? All those in favor? Vote mm -hmm. carries four to nothing. Um, I would ask for the concurrence on the appointment of Kelly Quinlan to the Cultural Council. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. I would ask for the board's acceptance of a donation of $100 to the Senior Center gift account from the Massachusetts Council on Aging. They do this uh, whenever there is a hosted event at one of our facilities. They uh, will oftentimes give a donation to support the, uh, the organization. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Go carries, four to nothing. Um, I would like to inform the board that the town of Sturbridge has received a, uh, a uh, $2,361 in dividends uh, from our insurance 
provider, uh, Meyer Property and Casualty Group. Uh, this past year, the Board of Directors declared $500,000 in dividends to be returned back to member communities, and this is our portion. Uh, so this is for your information. Um, I am also prepared to announce to the board tonight and to the town that the uh, Mass DOT has sent out its Chapter 90 uh, transportation aid funding for fiscal 19 uh, under the apportionment uh, formula given by the Commonwealth. That amount is $431,646. Can I uh, say a few words about that? Madam Chair. Yes. Um, on, on Wednesday of this week, the, um, the Joint Committee on Transportation will be holding a hearing in Boston at the State House on Chapter 90 funding. The Massachusetts uh, Municipal Association recommends an increase from the $200 million per year being funded uh, for Chapter 90 to $300 million per year. The uh, Commonwealth Department of Revenue collects between $90 million and $100 million per month in gas tax. And only a small portion of that, under 20% of that money, goes back to the cities and towns for, for needed road repairs and, uh, and ne things that we need for our roads. I, I strongly believe that uh, the amount of funding should be increased. Uh, 20 years ago, the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was appropriating $20 million, uh, $200 million a year, and there hasn't been any significant, except for one year that I can remember, that the funding has been increased. So I would like, I would request if the, uh, since I'm going to the hearing and uh, speaking my mind on, on this matter, I would uh, like the, uh, the board to uh, support me and in, in that I can represent uh, the town of Sturbridge viewpoint on the matter, mm -hmm. if uh, you so choose. I'll make a motion. You second that? Well, what, uh, there's <laughs> a motion. Uh, uh, unless you want to discuss, yeah, I don't want to. So well, we're going we're to discuss after you make okay. a motion. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm going to move that the we authorize uh, Mike Supernant to represent the board on behalf at the Mass DOT hearing with respect to recommending that the Chapter 90 funding be increased to 300 million um, as recommended by the MMA. Exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Just for reference uh, under discussion, that would, pro that would give us um, probably an extra $200,000 or so a year in extra funds to be used for road, bridges, uh, sidewalk construction, so on and so forth. So. Um, it would be in the ballpark of about two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars more mm -hmm. than what we get now. Which is a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. Thank you, Mike. In your agenda package, you have uh, um, correspondence from uh, Doug Vizard, who is uh, from. The, and I'm going to mispronounce these, and I'm sorry, but the Quaybog and Quaycomsacket Lakes Association, uh, they have sent you folks an email regarding South Pond and the protection of water at South Pond. They are, uh, Mass DOT is scheduling a bridge flow barrier replacement in fiscal ni year 19. Um, the flow barrier is absolutely critical to the water qu quality of South Pond, and what he is suggesting to us is that we all share responsibility to protect that water quality. Um, the association has been instrumental in promoting lake quality in the past, and they reference that in the past our board has sent letters of support to their projects in the past. And the first letter, I mean, the first page in the document that I've given to you is the letter that you folks sent back on September of uh, 2016 relative to a uh, discussion that you folks had about a draft permit uh, back in uh, 2016. They have prepared, they sent to you a, a copy of the notice of the public hearing. They've also sent to you uh, a, um, which I'm sure you've had a chance to read by now, the, um, the, their commentary on the, um, on the proposal 
that is coming before the uh, Mass DOT, and these are the questions that they are intending to um, inquire about at that hearing. Uh, Mr. Vizard is asking that the Board of Selectmen uh, consider um, supporting through a, a letter um, their efforts to question this on behalf of uh, the folks on South Pond. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. yeah. I, um, I think there's, there's two letters that should be going from, from this board, uh, one to the EPA regarding the, um, the <coughs> permits, uh, the, per the dis wa uh, wastewater discharge permit for the Spencer uh, wastewater treatment plan, and a second letter going to Mass DOT for that hearing uh, the the hearing for the first hearing would be on the the uh, discharge permits uh, f for the discharge permit for the Spencer wastewater treatment plan. I think that's on uh, March tw 26th in Spencer, if I'm not <coughs> mistaken. And the second hearing would be uh, with Mass uh, Mass DOT hearing. I, I believe it's on the 22nd of March. The DOT hearing is on the 22nd. So, so uh, I would, uh, you know, I would, we, last time we supported the permit, uh, proposed uh, draft permit for uh, Spencer, so I would propose that we, that first letter would be, would continue to support the, uh, the permit requirements. Uh, the, the phosphorus levels are, that they're pr proposing, uh, I think it's 0.2 milligrams per liter or 0.79 pounds per day of phosphorus being discharged from the plant is a uh, very low level and uh, that will cost the town of the, the Spencer, uh, town of Spencer a lot of money, but we've gone through it here as well. Uh, the second thing is the, uh, <coughs> the bridge will also include a, a barrier that will prevent water from the uh, Quaybog River going back into Clump. Cassandra's <coughs> at uh, Pond and then into Quaybog and, and eventually into South Pond. So that, that will be a barrier that would uh, prevent flooding back into those, those uh, ponds and uh, also s contamination with uh, river water. The, uh, the permit doesn't address, uh, the, the wastewater permit doesn't address uh, nitrogen levels which will be coming up in in the future <coughs> in this water quality basin because there's been a, EPA is working on the uh, Long Island uh, Sound uh, nitrogen uh, issues and all of the wastewater treatment plants that, that uh, are tributary to the Connecticut River uh, will, will face nitrogen levels uh, restrictions someday. So I don't know. Uh, so do you have a, mo do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we send a letter supporting the permit levels proposed by EPA. Okay, so make that one first. That's that's one letter. The okay. second letter, okay, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do them two that separate. That they'll be in the record as okay. separate. Okay, okay. I'll second it. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay, vote carries for that letter four to zero. Okay. And the sec, I'll make a motion that we send a second letter to uh, Mass DOT. Um, supporting the construction of the the bridge and uh, uh, barrier uh, between, uh, you know, going into, uh, it's, uh, it's not South Pond, it's Clump, it's a cut, uh, Pond. Okay. Is there um, a sec? <coughs> Is there a sec? Okay. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing for the second letter. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll prepare those letters, and I'm assuming that the motion was to have, like the last letter was signed by the chairman, to have the chairman sign on behalf of the board. Yeah. Yes, that was the intent of the motion to be similar to the last letter we wrote. Very good. Um, next on the agenda is a um, carryover from a previous meeting. However. Um, I did speak to Mary Blanchard today. She did ask if it could be carried over again until we had a full board. If you folks are agreeable to that. 
I was going to actually suggest that yeah. to the board to wait. Great minds think alike. Yeah. Um, in your agenda package, you will have a list. Uh, I am required to give to the Board of Selectmen um, a first meeting of March a list of any and all special town meeting and uh, annual town meeting articles which are proposed for the June town meeting. Um, in your agenda package, you have a memo, or not a memo, but a list that looks like this. I'm going to go through them quickly. You don't have to vote to include them at this time. That will happen at a later date. Um, but I do want to go through the articles so that the Board of Selectmen and the town know what articles are planned for at this time. At this time, I have no articles necessary for the special town meeting. Um, so we may not have a special town meeting in June. Um, and for the annual, um, we would have our annual, many of these are, as you can tell, our annual articles. One is for the, the town reports of the town, uh, community preservation report is required to be given. There are three CPC articles, one for cemetery restoration, one for open space, and one for administration. We have our roads funds article. Um, we're going to do our town budget at the annual town meeting as, long, as well as our water budget, our sewer budget. Uh, we will also have an article for our sewer debt as we typically would do. Uh, last year was the first year we had a, pu a public access uh, budget, so we will have one of those. We will also have a debt article for, th for community preservation. Uh, we will have a new article re regarding revolving funds uh, based on the new Municipal Modernization Act. Uh, we will have an STA budget. We'll have the betterment and the capital plan as usual. Uh, we will have an annual tree planting article as well as an annual ambulance fire vehicle stabilization articles. Uh, we will fund our OPED trust. We will fund an article for tax rate relief for the taxpayers of the town. We will, we will add monies to the capital stabilization fund. We will have an article for any unpaid bills. At this time, I'm not sure if there are any. However, for a placeholder, we're going to include that. We've had a request for data center upgrades at the public safety complex. We've also had um, a Burgess wireless um, project um, from Burgess Elementary School who is asking for an article. Uh, the recreational field project is, I've, asked, I've been asked for an article for that. Uh, we've carried over the false alarm bylaw and there is a proposal to um, apply for some state um, grants to install interior storm windows at center office building. And we are in the process of putting the finishing touches on an article for that. M Madam Chair, these are the only articles that we have tentatively. I um, mean, we may end up with some more. The Board of Selectmen may authorize other articles uh, moving forward as well. Mary? Mayor. Yes. Um, perhaps it should be an agenda item, but if it doesn't have to be, I'm prepared to make a motion now. I would like to, um, for the board to consider putting another bylaw on recreational marijuana like we did last year. I feel that given the townwide vote, how overwhelmingly they voted in favor of not allowing recreational shops and cultivation, I would like it to go before town meeting again. Um, I'm happy to have another, I'm happy to have it as an agenda item if the board wants to discuss it further, but um, you want it like last year, you want a, a, a ban on it, just Correct. like last year's? Correct. Okay. Um, um, and hold on, oh, can I just? Go ahead. Um, uh, because I know when our planning, um, when Jean was before us, she's gonna start the motion for a bylaw to regulate it, um, to, absent yeah. hearing anything from the board to the contrary. <clears throat> so, I mean, my position on it hasn't changed and I feel uh, because the vote wasn't even close that it, um, at, at our vote, at our townwide election, that it should go before um, town meeting again. Michael? Oh, I, I, I was just uh, uh, gonna comment that uh, from what I've been reading of the, the uh, planning board uh, meetings and so <laughs> forth, they, uh, I don't know if they're planning to be ready for recreational manor, marijuana at the annual town meeting, but they are planning to, to have a vote, I believe both 
to prohibit or regulate marijuana or at so, some future special town meeting. Uh, it, if that's not the case, I, you know, I would support your, your idea of bringing that up. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I, Gene made it clear that that's really a policy mm -hmm. um, debate, and I don't think we should leave it up to the planning board to decide whether or not, and I don't even, the way I view Jean's, um, she's waiting for the board of selectmen mm -hmm. to take a position. Absent us doing anything, they're gonna move forward as they should with a bylaw to regulate it. Um, but I would like to see the same kind of a warrant article that we had last year. Um, thank you for finding the three people that Priscilla had indicated that to come in. I didn't mm -hmm. move on the MMA person because I questioned whether he was going to have any more information than what our own attorney would have. I was looking more for somebody to discuss the um, impact. impact on the on our services, on what, what kind of impact it has on the community. So I would like to see it as a Warren article. I'm prepared to make a motion. Go for it. I'm going to make a motion that to the Board of Selectmen um, direct the town administrator to draft a, a warrant article um, banning recreational um, shops and cultivation and smoking lounges consistent with the one that we put before the voters last year and consistent with the question that was asked at uh, the town um, election. Is there a second? I'll second that. Yeah. Discussion. Uh, did you didn't mention cultivation? I, whatever. Uh, I, oh, oh did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I just get that heard last you say that again. The, the shop cultivation. What was the other? You know, basically, you can smoke, but we don't want retail <laughs> shops and cultivation. <laughs> no, I mean, it's smoking is legal. I mean, I mean, and I think some people lost that. Actually, I'm making a joke of it, but. Um, it's very clear for those residents watching. I mean, it is now legal in Massachusetts. It's still not federally legal, so that's going to be its own mess. But this doesn't ban anybody from smoking. But it's consistent with what we put before the voters, if you recall. And I believe you were on board at the time. Yeah, but I'd just it's, like to get, get the article again if we could. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't have, I said retail shops, yeah, retail, cultivation, yeah. Yeah. Um, farms, smoking lounges. Yeah, and I think that of any kind. Right. right. Um, commercial sales. Testing laboratories. Whatever we had on last year's. I can um, grab last year's. It's on my desk. Yeah, that. You want me to grab it? If, uh, if the rest of the board would well, like to see if it. If it's the same, it's the same. Sure I would support You want to make sure it covers it all. Yeah. You want to go back? say is that <laughs> evidently since we've talked before regulations. and medical after five years could be followed by the retail without any See. problems it sounds like that's changed again i still have issues with that yeah i really do i don't we didn't we know. were we were bamboozled that, that is exactly one. correct yeah yep. um, I, do, I agree i do want to also mention for the record and i'm going to ask our town administrator with the board support um so we are prepared i'd like to know how many surrounding communities have already <coughs> voted on it because I know that Southbridge has voted to ban it. So the more the surrounding communities vote to ban it, that's another consideration because we're not only going to be hosting our own residents, but to right. the extent other towns ban it, we're going to get everybody else's residents uh, here as well. And I wonder if our services can, can support that because I do know that Southbridge voted um, against it voted against it so if our town administrator if maybe the MMA knows but I'd like to know how many other surrounding communities have already addressed the question Central Mass Regional Planning Commission has been tracking that thing okay that, I, very, I that assumed issue it. very closely so okay because that's that also going to impact Sturbridge um, in terms of mm -hmm. traffic mm -hmm. um, coming into town madam chair yes the article 28 that was on the the uh, annual town meeting last year uh, said as follows to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws to insert a new chapter medically mar I'm sorry marijuana not medically prescribed by inserting the language below or take any other action relative thereto 
and it says, consistent with Mass General Law Chapter 94G, uh, Section 3A2, all types of marijuana establishments as defined in Mass General Law Chapter 94G, Section 1J, to include all marijuana cultivators, marijuana testing facilities, marijuana product manufacturers, marijuana retailers, or any other type of licensed marijuana related business shall be prohibited within the town of Sturbridge. Does that meet your? Yes, that, that motion certainly said it better than that's, me. That's got it all. So do you want it's on the your table. motion then, do you want your motion to amend to say to be Article 28 that was used at the annual town meeting of 2017? I do, and I thought, I, if I didn't say it, that is what I, um, I said consistent with last year's Warren article and consistent with the vote at town election. I would only add, Madam Chair, that it should probably also be consistent with what the new regulations say. For example, those statutes may have changed by now. So, I, I'm not so a, amended. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There, and there is a I second it, so I'm okay with sure. that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. Um, can I ask one more question related to this? Leon, um, remember I asked about clarification from council? Yes, you will be getting a okay. uh, response this I, week or next week. I just want to fill Pr Priscilla in because I believe she was absent that I day. I did watch it. Oh, you it did watch though. it because now it. Jean is yeah. thinking based on her discussion that all, including that one, could mm -hmm. be banned. Yep, and, and should be. Yeah, but we need a direct I, I answer. It, all in the same night, yeah. we we heard different things, yeah. which is frustrating. Okay. All set? Yes, I am. Madam I, have, yeah. I have one question, if you would, before we move on. Sure, with this. absolutely. Uh, on uh, item 25, Burgess Wireless Devices, 150,000. Yes. Oh. Is that okay. something that we can discuss if you know about it, or is that something relative to security? It is not regarding security. Okay. It is regarding um, a bulk purchase of iPads that they're looking for the town to uh, procure for them. They have been purchasing, as I understand it, they've been purchasing them uh, in dribs and drabs, and they're looking to have a bulk purchase and then replace in dribs and drabs. So, um, so these will be issued to the students for their, for their school year, or they'll be issued to the students permanently? for the school year not to be taken home. There you go. As I understand it. Right. Okay. But I, there's a lot that I don't know about this. Okay. There's, I'll, if you're asking for a great deal of conversation about it, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to answer all your questions. What I'm looking for is that uh, whether or not that those buildings, when we've had them refurbished and rebuilt, I understand that there's a possibility that there may be wiring in place at Tantasqua for the installation of outdoor cameras on the property? This doesn't have to do with that. Not that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's well, been discussed too. But what I'm looking for is that, do we have something in place? In other words, what are we putting in play for Burgess? Anything? As far as security, outside security? Not at all. I, I'm not able in to In other words, somebody's ringing the buzzer, that. but you can't see who's coming down the driveway, you can't see who's walking across the parking lot, going up to the back of the building. And it, 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 it's getting to that point where we've got to look at the security of our schools. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not sure that I can answer that question. Uh, I you. also think we got to find an exclusion to allow us to do that in executive session, because I think one thing that we don't want to do is tell the whole world how we're securing it. That's that's exactly correct. Yes. Yeah, so but I'm I mean, if sure we don't we don't start exclusion. here. Exclusion. They've started. I yep. do know for a fact. Yep. I agree with you, Craig, 100. Yep. percent I do know that uh, Tantasqua <laughs> has started the dialogue and we'll continue in March about some of the problems that are at Tantasqua, mm -hmm. middle and senior. Yeah. Um, but I do think if you want to pursue this, I'm all for it. Um, we could ask the, some of the members of the Burgess School Committee. I'm sure there's some exemption we can find yep. that would allow us to do it in executive session. Yeah, because well, that's what I said is, you know, is 150,000 something right. we can discuss? Because if it's, it entails security, then we right. don't want to discuss right. it. But I mean, to bring up the situation that we've got, we've got some security issues that we could take on, be it this or some other technique that you know is not really known that we should we should right. consider doing okay. because uh, I've. Can we put that on a on a future agenda item? Yep. So can we find is, an exclusion? There is an exclusion. Okay. Um, I there, there is was. an exclusion Number under um, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, and I want to say that it was six. No, uh, seven, um, chapter 34, section. Cha chapter 30A. 30A. Section okay. 21A, 
and I think it's paragraph, I, I wanted to say it was seven. Okay. Um, but which is the deployment of security forces or something yep. along those lines. Okay. Okay. It's not is something that, that we do on a regular basis, so right. I have to revisit what the number is. But okay. Is that exemption broad enough to discuss the school oh. resource officer? Should be. Well, was that something that you would like to have in exactly Well, no, I mean, there's certain questions I will ask in open session of the chief. I think it would, under that circumstance, I think the answer is yes. Okay. No, I still want him to discuss it, and I support it um, mm -hmm. in, in the regional schools that I have for a number of years. If it gets into questions that could, you know, arguably um, compromise safety because you're saying how many times you're responding, but mm -hmm. I would prefer all of those type of questions to be in executive session, mm -hmm. consistent with security questions. Right. So the police chief should be here too, is what you're kind right. of right. And I, right. The yeah. police chief... Um, well, I think has, the chief is prepared to come with it. Right, with, um, yeah. during his department head report, we are going to discuss the school resource officer. Right, we can. Um, yep. And yep. I would also like to tie briefly in. as an overview in terms of general support and the history leading to where we are right now, i.e. Burgess has one in the high school and junior high does not. But I agree when we get into particulars about school safety, I would like that to be in mm -hmm. executive it should session. Be. It With really our should chief, be. yes. Right. Yep. right. I would also like to tie in the, uh, the uh, school at the, at the village also. So we're looking. Old at, Village. We're looking at all the schools with I, all the children. Are you okay? Uh, because Tantasqua is a little different than right. Burgess. We got five towns. Right. Right. Do you want to do Burgess alone with the charter school? Is that what you're asking about the charter school? Because that's elementary. So that if you say that that Tantasqua has a program in place and they're working on it. I uh, yeah, that's maybe maybe we could get. In on what what's going on, so we can see see what, yeah, it's what not we that, what we don't. It's not that great. Uh, what I what what I can tell you is yep. this: yep. is that they have discussed it, and it's going to continue for discussion. But there's nothing definitive in place. Just so you know, um, in 2014, they had that new they had a, the last mass gun law that was filed by and signed by Governor Deval Patrick. And it had three stipulations in that gun law. And if I knew we were going to come with this, I would have brought it with me, but I'll bring it next time. There are three. One is that there has to be a safety plan, a school safety plan for every school. The school safety plan has to be reviewed annually by the superintendent, by administrators, by the school nurse, by police and fire department. They have to review it. No one knows what the plan is, mm -hmm. nor should anyone know. The second thing is they have to provide for mental health help for students, their families, administrators, and faculty so that they have some sort of plan in place for mental health issues to, to help them avoid any such happenings that have happened elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And the third is an SRO, or a school resource officer. Mm -hmm. Those are the three stipulations in the 2014 mass gun law. And I'll bring it, um, in fact, I can run it off. Um, it's pretty thick, but I can run it off so you all can have it and I'll stick it in your box at some point. I, I, I can understand that and, and I can understand handling an executive session. Mm -hmm. But if, if we don't take an objective look at what's going on, irregardless of the other towns, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to look some parent in the face and say, why didn't you take care of this? And they say, I wasn't I suggesting get. it that we do it. With, I wasn't suggesting that. What I'm saying is, is that because the elementary school is in a different domain, sort of, mm -hmm. it's not, it's, it's itself, whereas Tantasqua, I agree with you right. 100%. Right. We do what we need to do for right. our own. Right. All, and meaning our own, mean all the children at right. Tantasqua, no matter where they come from, they're ours. And um, then we take the junior high and senior high separate. Because the elementary school has the SRO, and they have a they have a lot of programs in place, mm -hmm. and I think we can get we can learn from them what they do, and then see what the others are doing and compare. If you're okay with that, uh, I am. But I'm also trying to compare that with the fact that when the temperature was down to below zero, we didn't have anybody in that building 24 hours a day That's policing a it while it was issue. going on. Yeah. So evidently. Issue. The, the things that we think are in play not. are not in play because we had people in our town buildings checking the temperatures and checking the pipes and everything yeah. else. And now it's a $400,000 problem up there yeah. that we never should have had in the first place. Right. Their insurance will cover it, but that's still not the and case. And I that's am not, not too confident yeah. on what's going on up there as far as 
policing the atmosphere, and I would feel more comfortable if I knew what was going on, especially in this particular thing where these problems are popping up all over the country. So would you be amenable to talking to the Burgess School Committee first, and then the Sturbridge members of the Tantasqua Regional Committee? Absolutely. Okay, so can we plan those <laughs> for executive session? So just so that I'm clear, you're looking to have an executive session and invite the school representatives to come and speak um, at a future selectman's meeting. Yes, in an executive session. Under, understood. Okay. Okay. Sure. Exactly. And maybe we might, if we have a light agenda, maybe we could start our, uh, just a suggestion, whatever the board decides, but maybe start the meeting at six and do the executive session because you don't want to go into an executive session. It's going to be a detailed discussion. Right. Right. And we want to, I think we want that kind of time. Even if we had to have the executive session at 1 or 2 o'clock, I, I, I have no yeah. problem with coming in on it. It's a very important issue. And I, I, think I agree with you 100%. As yeah. far as the charter school goes, uh, he doesn't have to report for us or anything. No. But if not, I think we should certainly get a hold of our police chief. And from a public safety, uh, public safety thing, I think we should get the police chief in there okay. and find out what we have in place so that he has got a plan in place. Okay. So maybe we can set this. I don't know how their schedules are for a, a, a 1 o'clock, but maybe we can even yep. set this on a date that we don't meet, even if Absolutely. we had to add an extra month I would do it in a executive heartbeat. session. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, we're good. Yeah, do we all agree. Do you? Mm-hmm. Are you under new business. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay, so are you all set? Um, I am, yes, thank you. Okay, all right. Old business. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. thank you for bringing it up. Old business. Mr. Moran? No, ma'am, I'm doing fine. Okay. I, I have uh, a request under old business that uh, we, some time ago we discussed with the, uh, our building inspector, mm -hmm. uh, buildings that um, have, that are, burnt down or uh, um, in disrepair and um, <coughs> now we have you know more than one we've got a couple of them going on now maybe th three or, or more years ago uh, when there was a building next to the Milliard marketplace where the little uh, pocket park is just the side of the Milliard uh, there was a building there that that stood for a long time, and the town had to do an appropriation of money to to uh, demo demolish the building, and then, you know, we ended up with a nice park. I mean, uh, we, some of the some of the abandoned buildings that we have in town, I think we need to demol you know, be proactive on that. Next time the uh, the building inspector c uh, comes before us, uh, could the town administrator have him prepared to discuss abandoned buildings? And uh, you know whether or not some kind of fund is needed, a revolving fund, where because uh, you know if the property, if the town demolishes the building, <coughs> it becomes a lien on the property, and the town can be reimbursed for any expenses that we have uh, on that. So um, I'd I'd like to you know have some kind of discussion with that with about that with the building inspector and uh, uh, next. Uh, uh, when he does his next report. Okay. Anything else? Anything That's else? It. Mary? Um, I don't have any old business. Okay. I just have, um, I just have uh, two actually questions. We had asked a while ago for, remember when, for packets to be ready like by Friday noon? Do you remember? I remember Monday. Friday. I don't yeah. exactly but remember the time. Is it possible to get them by noon or? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, if it's not calling, you know, two o'clock maybe, by two o'clock, so we can, we can have them. Okay. Um, the budget date, is that still March 24th? It is. It is. Okay, so it's March 24th. Do we have a time? 8.30, I believe. Okay. Right. And the packets, the books will be ready um, a week before? Hopefully. God willing. Okay. God willing. Yeah. Okay. I also had another question. The logging that's going on on 131, that... Hmm? Yeah, mm. do we, do we, did that come through us? Because I don't, maybe it was when I wasn't here. Yeah. It did? Okay. It's all I need. It's all I need. A okay. while ago, was it? Where the 40B yep. is. Okay. Yep. The, all right. Yep. 
Yep. Where the 40B is? No. No, that's not the 40B. Wait a minute, that's no, the one that's, 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 oh, the no, one that's Jack, across the from Spinney. The one's Finney's. by Jack's, yeah, yeah across from Spinney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that yeah. a while yeah. ago? Yeah. Is that a long, time, a long time ago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to be sure. It takes yeah. them a while, yeah. apparently, yeah. to get yeah. going. Okay. Well, you, you may recall that part of your requirements are that they have to do it when the solid, when the ground is solid. Ground is solid, yeah. So they might get, they might do all that work in the winter time to get the approvals, but they're not going to do it until later on. Right. Okay, new business? Yes. Okay. Um, if you look, it says that we may be receiving a request for a one-day liquor license in early March from a local hotel that doesn't currently have a liquor license. Right. What I'm, what I'm wondering is, we, we had a discussion about that the last time that two, two licenses came before us. Yep. And what I'm wondering is, did we ever find out whether or not they do need a license when the people are supplying their own alcohol at that venue? Or you know, do we get a BYOB thing just to say who's doing it? To, you know, I, I don't understand. But you know, to keep continue uh, all the time issuing one-day liquor licenses, one-day liquor licenses, when the other uh, hotels in town are paying so many thousand dollars a year for a liquor license. Mm -hmm. So, but they have bars, right? The other ones have bars, correct? The li the, the hotels that pay for the liquor license have a bar. Right. Well, you can have a bar too, but it, you know, it, to keep issuing, you can issue a license 365 days a year, and uh, it doesn't say that you have to have a bar. You don't have to have a bar. You can just sell alcohol. We 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 actually have an answer for you. Go ahead. Colleen and I had a conference call with the ABCC to yep. discuss this very issue, um, and the answer is yes. They do have, um, they do have that. That is the preferred method of dealing with those licenses is to issue a one-day liquor license. What we're not doing correctly is we've been issuing the one-day liquor license to the facility, mm -hmm. and it really should be the applicant. That and um, the f we, you as the board have a requirement to limit the number of one-day liquor license at the facility to no more than 30 per, per calendar year. So theoretically, you could have a number of these things coming before the board of selectmen. However, Colleen and I are going to meet with that applicant and have a discussion with them about that because, you know, it does put a burden on the Board of Selectmen, but more importantly, it puts a burden on the applicants to continue to come before the Board of Selectmen and, and ask for those one-day liquor licenses. So Colleen and I got all the information we need to be able to have a meaningful conversation with them, and we will uh, in, the next, uh, in the short term. Right. Well, the, the, point, the point I'm trying to get at is that, you know, the applicant would be the people who are asking to have correct. the alcohol, they want to bring it into the facility. That's correct. But now you're getting into a situation where those people have to be behind the quote unquote bar, right? If they're going to serve mixed drinks or whatever they're going to serve, then you're going to get into the situation where the hotel is going to have to supply the ginger ale, the mixers, whatever it's going to be, because they got to make their money. Potentially. So now you could have two people behind the bar. You know what I mean? It, it gets a little confusing. These are the com this is the conversation Colleen and I will be having mm -hmm. with our friends at the mm -hmm. uh, new hotel. Eric? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Michael? No. Mary? No. This is um, new, new business. business. Yeah. Um, and it's going to come up under correspondence as well, but I just want to um, state for the record, because we may have residents watching, we have made a request that um, we review our contract with Spectrum <laughs> regarding their duties and obligations because a number of um, residents are having problems with their service. And I know our town administrator indicated that we have our local rep coming in mm -hmm. at a forthcoming meeting. I did mm -hmm. invite the rep. I haven't heard back from okay. the rep as of yet, but I did outreach to them yesterday, um, yesterday morning uh, to ask if they would uh, be able to come to a future meeting. I gave the next three dates okay. as possible dates for uh, for him to come in. Um, I haven't heard back from him as of yet, but I, as soon as I do, I will schedule him accordingly. Great. For new business, yes. In, in light with what Mary just asked for, um, we used to have, our town administrator used to have a contact with Charter, a contact person so that if there were hang-ups like they were this past weekend where they were three days, two, 41 hours without services and the like, um, that they could call that person and, that, and it expedited it somehow. We don't have that. I mean, you call 
they have been very kind at Charter and they, and they answer very well, but there's no, there's no time frame. Like when you call National Grid, they'll tell you, yes, there's a power outage in Stewartbridge, mm -hmm. we expect to restore such and such a time. Charter, nothing. There's, there's no restoration time at all. And maybe that's something that they need to think about um, giving as their message and say, yes, we, you get the message saying there are outages, but even the folks that are answering it, the customer service, they're so apologetic because they can't tell you anything. They don't no, know. They don't know. They don't know. I, just to be clear, I don't get notifications of outages for cable. I get notifications for power right. outages. Right, but you, get them from, you would get them from us via the residents yes, yes. giving them to I'm us. Sorry, we yes. would hand them. We, that's, how it used, that's what we used to do, just forward it to the t TA <coughs> and say, you know, can you call your friends or can you call your contacts mm -hmm. and see what we can get for this. Uh, because this, I mean, uh, we're getting another storm, so here we go again. <laughs> okay, that's it for new, right? Okay, approval, uh, correspondence, Mary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I had new business. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I just want to, I sent you folks a memo on Friday uh, that at this meeting on the new business, I would ask the Board of Selectmen to accept the resignation of Dan Matt as the facilities coordinator, uh, effective March 18th. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. And is there dis discussion? Um, I just want to say it's with regret. I'm very sorry that he is resigning. I know that we really need that position. We've fought for it for a long time. And I hope that, um, you know, I wish him well. I, he wasn't here long, so I, I hope that he was given yeah, just about every a, opportunity. Yeah, uh, oh, yes. Uh, we, he and I are leaving on, I would say, decent terms. Mm -hmm. yes. Good. Okay. okay. We'll start a hunt immediately. The search. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, no, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. Mm -hmm. Mary, correspondence? Yes. Um, correspondence dated February 12. Charter Communications, effective March 6, 2018 and March 10, 2018, announcing changes to the channel lineup. Correspondence dated February 16th from the Mass Municipal Association regarding the legislative breakfast meetings on March 2, March 9, and March 16. February 19th, Sovereign Consulting, post-temporary solution status report number 14, completed for Pilot Travel Center's 40 Haines Street, Surbridge. I'm going to add two to the correspondence list if I could. Um, February 28th, 2018, and fi March 4, 2018, emails from A. Menard, Lauren Lane, regarding problems with Spectrum services in his neighborhood. Okay. So do we keep these um, like on file, or do we just Sorry. once we announce them, do we? No, we have we quite an extensive list of correspondence. Okay, going so I'm, back. I'll give this to um. I don't know. I like that added to it. No, I'll add it. I oh, have you it. don't need your own. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. You're, you're fine. That's it. If um, I believe that I have both of those emails. Okay, but you if, were saying. Okay, I just wanted to make but sure. But if I that don't, I will outreach to you. Okay. Do you know if the entire board received those? I sent everything to everybody, yes. Okay, so the, the meeting, the, I'm sorry. The first the, one was February 28th, mm -hmm. which I forwarded to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. he may actually have gotten through because he sent it to a general email, but mm -hmm. he wasn't certain if it got through, so I resent it to everybody mm -hmm. okay, and so, you. So the two emails are actually from you? They're so from, forwarded, if they're from A. Menard. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Oh, I guess, yes, from me. I got you. To me, and then I forwarded <laughs> it. I'm also, thank you. All right. All right, approval of minutes. Uh, I want to start with February 20. Any corrections on the minutes of February 20? Under public service announcements, yeah. uh, the, the word sings should be signs. Um, at the very bottom of the page, the last, uh, Sentence, uh, El Gama, Gama uh, reported, and also uh, the set next, the whole bottom of that page it repeats at the top of the next page. So, 
when you start on the top of the next page, uh, we're fine again. <laughs> so just uh, just scratch out that uh, start on the bottom of the first page up until the word ro road, which should have been rot. Isn't that a, yeah. that's bizarre. Uh, the, uh, in that paragraph at the top, <coughs> on the top of the second page, um, it's the, uh, when they're talking about the buffer zone, mm -hmm. where work being done, um, uh, work could, uh, it, the wording seems awkward there. I don't know if that sentence can be uh, straightened out, so it uh, it, it seems bad. to seems to be a little bit. Where work is being done, could work be conducted right up to me? Is that what it is? That's correct. That's okay. Right yeah. up to yeah. the button. Yeah. yeah, I think it's okay. 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 That I guess it. He's got the uh, comma in there. Yeah. 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 All right. It separates it. And I think down. Uh, uh, Third line up uh, from the bottom of that paragraph, asked El Gama if not I the board could get an opinion. Town Council. Mm -hmm. uh, going to page three. Um, under district capital projects requests, I, I thought on the list uh, on there uh, we we do have the DPW building and everything, but I. I think uh, I think we also asked for a senior center money for the senior center as well. Just so that you know, I did. I think I forwarded to the board what I submitted as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's, but I think it's important. You know, there's a lot of people interested in in the senior center, and I think if we just add senior cent, we requested money for the senior center as well in the, mm -hmm. that paragraph. Um, <coughs> under application for. S special use permit just below that uh, the motion uh, that uh, that uh, <coughs> Selectman Moran made I think was uh, fishing derby at Big Alum Pond uh, at, um, around it, Alum Pond is you know Big Alum there's a in the area there's another pond that's called Little Alum Pond so we always on page four um, the under the motions for uh, acceptance of uh, Old Town Way is uh, in in the actual motion. Uh, I think the motion was taking Old Town Way as a public way, not a public road. And also, in, in the amended motion, it would be a public way. That's. That's usually how it's referred to in the motions. And I think that's it on that, on this set of minutes. Okay, anybody else? No. Okay, there are motions. I'll, mo I'll move to approve the minutes of February 20, 2018. Second. Okay. All those in favor? The vote is 301. I'm abstaining, I wasn't here. Just for clarification, that's as amended. As amended. As amended, yeah. 301. Okay, the next one, February 26. That was our meeting at the uh, That's right, high school. At the high school, yep, that one page. Yeah. Um, uh, under the uh, final review of special town meeting warrants, the, uh, the second motion that was made by M. Dowling to take no action on Article 52. It says all in favor, usually we, we uh, put the vote in parentheses, so it would be 4-0 and Oh, parent. sure, I can correct that. That's, that's a minor thing. Yep. Um, in, you know, halfway down the paragraph on discussion of the half marathon to benefit, um, we refer to the uh, chief. Uh, we, we could either use chief of police or police chief on both locations, because later on we mentioned the fire chief, so so as to avoid some confusion. Okay. And at the very bottom of the page, uh, we usually have a space for the Board of Selectmen's clerk to sign and date 
the approval of the minutes. I think as you go on with that, it'll, it'll be self-explanatory because at the end of that paragraph, it says M. Supernaut also suggested that the fire chief be consulted mm. to ensure mm -hmm. they have proper medical support. Yeah. So that will automatically kick you back to the police chief. Yeah. That's fine. I can make that correction. Yeah. Is there any other corrections? Surprising on a one page. They're both thinking, oh, brother. I just have two very small things. Yep. Um, the second line on the discussion of the half marathon, following Sturbridge resident Rick Hoyt, can we insert to be held on September 9, 2018? Because we mentioned the date yeah. that it's going to be. And then halfway down, the sentence begins, M. Dowling said that the town has yet to endorse the project. Cross out town and put BOS, because it kind of makes it appear like we have to go before town meeting, and we don't. And that's it. Sure. Anything else? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? As amended. Uh, as amended, yep. OK. All those in favor? Vote carries 4 to 0. April 3rd, 2017. Uh, at the bottom of the first page, um, the motion to approve as opposed to approval. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, page numbers at, at the bottom of each page could be added. Um, top of the second page have the un, in the motion it says assistance program and to have the chair sign the affirmation the word the could be inserted in there and the on, on the uh, paragraph uh, that begins S. J Jarris, uh under the public hearing, the, I think the w way you spell the para, the last is just with one R, not two, P A R A. Yep. Um, and I, uh, in it says M Supernaut just after that it says M Supernaut asserted that he visited the site. And I didn't actually visit the site with Greg Morris, but I agreed with. Greg Morse on the matter uh, uh, that caution is needed, da 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 da. So I, I just, I was just put and agreed would get, uh, Greg and I didn't go out there together. We, I went out, looked at it, and he had commented in a memo that uh, caution should be made with the, mm -hmm. based on the construction there. Okay. Any and others? I think that's it. That's it. Anybody else? Oh, um, were you ever a school teacher? You're really ripping these no. things up. No, I, I mean, there, <laughs> I mean, just this, that's not very much. There's a lot of words here. I don't know. Um, on the very last page of that uh, is uh, under old business, they're talking about Chris Thierry from, is, the, is that the idea agency? Is that two words or all one, one. word? Okay. That's her. Trademark. Oh. Trademark, right, cool. exactly. I knew somebody who cool. asked that. And she repeats the A as well. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Greg, any? No, that's, that's uh, okay. Mary? No. Okay, I have one. Um, where the votes go, 401 or get their split, we've always put the names of the split. So if we had 401, the one, whoever's abstaining would be listed. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see that on all the split votes, whether it's 3-2, 3-1, 4-1, whatever it is, that we continue listing the names. Okay, so I helped with these. And I should have put it there. So it was me abstaining. M. Dowling arrived at 720 and abstained from the vote. Mm -hmm. It's just written a little lower. Yeah. Okay, is that for all those votes or just, no, just that this vote? Motion just that C. vote. Okay, for okay. that vote, but not the rest of them. Did you abstain from this other one too? And the other one? There's oh, two I'm more. Oh, I'm sorry. There's two more. Right. I'll ha I'll. I think you abstained from all of those. I, I, yeah, we should have moved the. Um, 
I did. So, so it is you. So you can add okay. it. It was me. Okay. All right. But in the future, can we have that mm -hmm. on all the minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. There a motion? Motion to accept the minutes of April 3rd, 2017 as amended. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. Next is April 18. Uh, again, as in the last one, if the page numbers could be added at the bottom of the page. Uh, on page three, I in the f under the department head reports, it says he stated that the senior center expansion study should come back soon from tie and bond. I think that would be CME Associates, if I'm not mistaken. One, one second. Okay. You got it? Yep. You, you agree it's CME Associates and not tie and bond? Let's say for argument's sake, the answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, the last paragraph on that page, uh, the, the last name of uh, uh, Frank is spelled B-I-C-C-H-I-R-I-E-R-I. -I -E All right, one more time. B-I-C-C-H-I-R-I-E-R-I. -I -E and don't ask me to pronounce it. Wow. Well, I'm going to sign a paycheck for that thing. It, it, it's a couple places in that paragraph, his name is, and on the top of the next page is mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that's all I got. Anybody else? Is there a motion? I'll move to accept the minutes of April 18th, 2017 as amended. Is there a second? There is. All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. September 5th. Twenty seventeen. Okay. On the first page in the uh, under the uh, request designated selectmen to attend CMM PO info and member. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, the the first sentence reads a little. I, I had a hard time understanding what it said, and I would say, uh, I would say uh, the uh, uh, the town administrator received a notice from Central Mass Metropolitan Planning Organization that they are seeking representative from every town. I would put a period after that. And um, you could put <laughs> after uh, Central Mass Metropolitan Planning Organization, CMMPO, in parentheses. And then it, the next sentence would say the CMMPO cross out which this is the Central Massachusetts Metropolitan Pl Planning Organization meeting cross out the word which will will be held on Thursday, September 21st at 6 p.m. I, I, uh, that whole, I got it. I got you got I it? it? Yep. Okay. And I believe that was it for me on this one. Anyone else? <clears throat> Uh, is there a motion? I'll, motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of September 5th, 2017 as amended. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. November 20, 2017. I don't think we can do it. Can't do it? No, no we don't. Have. I, we don't have, um, you're right. Yeah. 
We can't do this one? No. No, we'll no. carry this no. over to the no. next meeting. Yeah. Um, We're going to get two members here. Is it here. useful for me to give my amendments now or at the next meeting? Unless you no, want. No, give them to us now. Okay, is that and then useful? then we'll have them corrected. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, so on this page two, three quarters of the way down, the paragraph, M. Dowling, thank the attendees. Um, could you add this sentence? M. Dowling asserted that the flyer that was mailed to a number of residents contained inaccurate and misleading information by stating that the wetland bylaws were being changed. You need me to read it back, Colleen? We'll, we'll get it off the tape. We'll watch it. Oh. All right, oh, I'll wow. read it one more time. It's just one sentence. M. Dowling asserted that the flyer that was mailed to a number of residents contained inaccurate and misleading information by stating that the wetlands bylaws were being changed. If you have it written out, we'll take it too, just to be safe. You can keep it. Okay. So we're holding those minutes anyways, right? Yeah, and so we need a, mm -hmm. we need one more person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next one is August 8th, 2016. <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, you missed uh, August, October 3rd? No, I was going to August 8th, 2016. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. She's going in order. Like, uh, yeah, I'm going in order, order, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm trying right. to. <laughs> sure. Um, do we have enough people? Yeah, we do. We have enough. All right. Hold on this one. Mm -hmm. Did people have changes? Nope. Okay, I move to accept the August 8th, 2016 min meeting minutes. Second. Okay. All in favor? Well, no, the vote has to be 3 0 1. Mm hmm. I can't vote. So the abstention October was 3rd. M. Su Superna abstained. October 3rd, 2016. Changes? We'll correct the spelling of Deborah Gauthier's name. Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the min meeting minutes dated October 3rd, 2016. Is there a second? As amended. As amended. Second. There was no, no, second. There wasn't any amendments a on spelling that. Oh, there spelling. Spelling okay. of, of Deborah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, all in favor? Vote carries four to nothing. Okay. Citizens Forum. There is no one. I'll take a motion. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Adjourn. 7.54. Look at how we move through the meeting today. I, uh, Catching up with those minutes, aren't we?